Sanders uh, put a uh, black woman, I don't know if she's AD or well, ADOS at this particular point is known not only just a, a, a lineage thing, it's also a state of mind. Uh, you know, you can be an ally to ADOS and have that state of mind. You can be involved in some other you know, organization that, that thrust forth in, in the past and still be a, have an ADOS mentality and still be a part of that organization. Well, I'm going to that right now, but here's, here's what Bernie did. He put a uh, her name is Brianna Joy Gray or something. Like, let's call her Brianna, because Brianna sounds like a good, a good one, you know. Because that's like a somewhere between. Uh, uh, sounds like one of those one of those women, you know, dark black women that that went to like really good schools and stuff like that and got out of the circumstance, ain't been in the hood for a while, but you know, still thinks they can hang with the hood, that kind of thing. But don't worry about her. Let's not, let's not assassinate her character because we don't know what she is yet because she ain't said nothing. Even though I don't know. Last time I saw it, isn't that the one? They interviewed Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and they were having a good time on that stage. They both were sort of being famous or whatever happened. I don't know. It'll all come out, because it always does. What well, it got me to thinking, is that what they call identity politics? You know, you're, 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 maybe you feel, you're not feeling, the, you know, maybe like uh, Auntie Nina hasn't got enough, uh, hadn't got enough headway into the black community. You need a black face on something. I don't know. But let me give you a little... This is back in 19, uh, let me see it, no more radio, da, da, da. went to this convention in 88, so this would be, I don't know, 87, about 86, 87, um, WBAI was uh, experiencing the aftermath of another big upheaval, which it always does, you know, there was one upheaval when I first got there, I think, like in 83 or something like that, we just uh, stopped the name names this time. It was the uh, program director, the main program director, Steve Erickson, who came from the, more or less the, the uh, engineering ranks. He got on there and he kicked a lot of uh, a lot of people off the air, you know, took their programs away, you know. People like Pepsi Charles, who was my, one of my favorite teachers in the, in the world. In fact, I, I was first at BAI uh, when they were back at the church it was just on 64 feet. Someone was back on at the church, and when it was just uh, was the church. It was it was let's call it a church because it had a big old area. And it, just, it was huge station. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was gifted by somebody. That was back in the day when you know when actually you know, you know not only did you know, William Buckley and Malcolm X broadcast over BAI at some particular point in, in, in the early 60s, but also um, uh, what's that? Ayn Rand. You know, Ayn Rand used to come up there with with her with her acolytes. Uh, uh, the Greenspan guy, you know what I mean? The people that got us all into all this kind of financial stuff, and then that's why they're real good in the world now. Anyway, I digress. So, um, so he had a people, and then somehow he was gone, and uh, we had a new station manager, John Simon. I'm naming names. John Simon. He came in there, and what he did because of what Stephen Erickson, you know, the uh, the, the white boy had done. Uh, and I like Stephen. Stephen as an engineer, but as an administrator, oh, whatever. And um. Anyway, rate, so what he did, he came in and he said he vowed that he was going to, the next uh, pro program director was going to be a minority. That's what he said. He said a minority. Oh, this, remember, this is like 86 or whenever it was. And I'm going, okay, like everybody's going to let, oh, let's wait, see what this minority is going to be like. There's the problem. Let's wait. Let's see. You know, let's go. And he's, he's, he's a, he's a, I don't know how the process went. I really don't know what the process was like because it seemed like he just appointed somebody. There was no committee or nothing like that to bring this guy in. Who did he bring in? This guy named John Scagliotti. John Scagliotti doesn't necessarily sound like a minority, does it? Mm -hmm. You know, and that, oh, here's John Scagliotti's fame, claim to fame, by the way. He was a producer on that whole Stonewall film, a film they did about Stonewall. I haven't, actually haven't seen that film about Stonewall. Gee, I've seen a lot of films. Seems like maybe I did and I don't remember it. 
whatever. But you know, Stonewall, that was the, the, the ride for me, that, that whole um, 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 uh, gay, it was really gay at this point. It wasn't, it wasn't really lesbian. Actually, it was transsexual. There were transsexuals, uh, black and, and Latino transsexuals to be exact. It started a whole Stonewall thing, the police was beating on him, and they wasn't taking it anymore, and they blah, 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 and, 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 and whatever. But they made this film, you know, and he was one of the producers on the film. From that claim to fame, he became the um, program director, from a producer of a film, to being a program director of the largest community radio station in the United States of North America. Hmm. I clearly remember, we was in the program director's office, which was a big office, right opposite the main control room. Oh, by the way, I say main control room because it used to be called, in the day when they first made it, master control. So this is what I always do. I didn't want to take the MC out of it, so I just renamed it for me, main control room. So I always say main control room, even though people would say master control room, but you know, that's just my mentality. Anyway. I mean, the holes, not the whole, all a lot of staff. Let's stay, the, the office was packed. It was a big office. The office was packed. I clearly see John Simon standing over there, and Scagliotti sitting on the walls, sitting on the desk, or, you know, leaning on the desk. And he says, "This, you know, program director." And everybody was doing stuff. They, they, they were asking questions. At some particular point, look. Sometimes, you know, you have to cut to the chairs. I'm in the back of the room. I raise my hand. By that point, I'm, I'm sort of weirdly known because, you know, I do a lot of engineering and stuff like helping Bernard and the emanations and all that stuff. So I said, but you said this was going to be a minority hire. It's a, you know, uh, this doesn't look like a minority to me. He said, he's gay. He got the position as a minority because he was gay. Now, let me take you back. Let me take you back a little bit, just from my own little consciousness. Let me get to something else later. When I was, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in a move, and, you know, uh, well, back in the day, I always thought, you know, that the white man was not going to give up his power easy. This is before 65. I, I, I've been political since, like, at least 63. So I'm going like, you know, I'm projecting in my own head, you know. Now the white man is not going to give it up to a... Uh, you know, to, you know, to, to, I, my, he'd probably give it to his woman. That's what I thought. Well, how wrong was I? Because what did the white man give it up to another white man? White man gave it up to his man because he has, well, remember the, um, the men's health crisis thing on 13th Street, it was, the, the, it became the gay center, gay men's health crisis center. They had to change to lesbian, they would include that, and they, they then became the, the, the lesbian, whatever, LB, then all those other stuff started flowing and through, throughout that whole AIDS situation, but we won't go into that, the health crisis situation. So there's, there it is. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Okay, cut to something else. Uh, and oh, I, I waged a whole campaign, a whole year. I, I used to write one to three, um, one, two, three, one, two or three memos, but wrote memos in uh, a week. I did this for a year. And, and my memos, and so I really got good at it, are what we call dense pack. You know what I mean? So you still have those two lines, whatever. But in that middle thing, if you read one of my memos, you go like, oh, this is heavy, this is deep. Oh, yeah. Did that for a year. And then my last memo, when I gave up, when I stopped the campaign, I, I put out the regular memo. It went to a select group of people, because some, some sort of lead. Anyway, it went to a select group of people. So if you, any of you people still have them, I have them someplace, I suppose. Um, the last one, I also included a blue envelope. Uh, well, a blue piece of paper in an envelope, and that blue paper was a decoding of the last memo, which basically that decoding that that blue paper is blue. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think blue. I cursed them out. Uh, I, I translated the memo, which the memo was in polite language, but the blue translation was like cursed about like that. I guess I threw up my little campaign. It took me a year, but I I, I had a catharsis. You know, like, that's how I do it. I write. That's what I. That's what I do. Okay, now here we go. Somewhere in there, I guess it was like 89, maybe, whenever it was, I forget what it was, in the 80s, um, they, we had a, um, a, a consultant come to the, because every once in a while, WBA, I just WBA in New York, we're talking about Pacifica radio station, they have these like, uh, like a big, maybe a Saturday we take, we have the whole staff, we have some sort of, uh, you know, I don't know, sessions, you know, to, to improve the station, whatever it is. So we had this radio consultant that came from, and consulted with community radio stations all over the world. And one of the things he did when he first came in, well, when he came in, he was just talking to a group of us. I'm always early because I'm a trained stage manager, but also, you know, I'm an archivist. You know, you know, we always set up our, um, you know, our setups, you know, like audio setups real early. So I'm used to being early places and leaving late. I'll tell you about in Brazil one time when I left late and got an exclusive thing. Anyway, 
So uh, the guy says, you know, he had just come from Ohio. I don't know if it was Cleveland or Cincinnati. Let's make like it was Cleveland because, you know, this year, you know, uh, anyway, let's make like it was Cleveland. Uh, so he says he, the, the, the board had asked him to come in because they wanted to reach, you know, the community, more minorities in the community, whatever have you. So he walked in there and was, I'm just going to make up a number. Maybe just say there's 18 people on the board. You want me to go down to 12? Now let's make, yeah, 18 is a better number. 18 people on the board. He walks in there, he looks at it, immediately he says, half you people have to go because they were all white. Half, half the board, you know, so the whole board is white trying to reach a, a, a so-called minority situation, you know, the, the hood, the, the, you know, well, they wasn't the hood back then, but, you know, the, you know reach the ghetto. You know. So that's what he told them. That's what they had to do. He's like, so, so anyway, back to our session. So when, he, when we had our session, our session was a, a full day session. The first, the, the, the first part of the day, the morning session dealt with, I think, race. Dealt with race. The second, they dealt with gender and um, I forgot something else. I forgot what it was. Anyway, so somewhere in the you know, for, you went through the whole, you know, the whole stuff that you talk about race and that. The afternoon session when they started with, when they, when they started whatever. Somewhere late in the afternoon when it was on the, maybe I think it was on the women's session. Maybe it was before. People kept on saying that whole afternoon, but just like black people, just like black people. That's all you heard was just like black people. And everybody's equating this such session to, to black people. Maybe the other session was about um, unions or something like that, or whatever. Just like black people. Just like black people. Just like black people. That's all you heard, you know. And I'm going like, wait a second. So at some particular point, here I go, came with my big mouth. I said, wait a second. If this house of cards is just like black people, then why don't we just solve the black problem first, and everything else will just fall. If you solve the black problem, which is the essence of everything, you know, I didn't call it the slave problem. If you solve the black problem, then it's, and essentially you can solve all these other problems because everybody says it's just like black, the black, black problem. No true. That's it. So what we have here with, you know, well, Bernie jumped on it, you know, said, you know, hey, let's put a black face and, you know, to spoke speaks for me. But here's the problem with putting any old black face. You got to vet that thing. Again, Auntie Nina, what were you, didn't you vet this person? You vet them just because they went, well, did they go to Harvard, Yale, you know, Brown, or whatever, you Stanford? What, what, is that the vetting? If you go to one of those schools and that's it? I don't get it. So I'm wrong. I'm not coming down on Bernie Sanders' campaign. I mean, he's, he's just a regular, Bernie Sanders is a regular old politician, okay? I'm sorry. Who are you Bernie people? He's just a regular politician, which is fine. Okay, a regular, what do you, what do you call it? Um, uh, what's that guy? Uh, 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 Delano, Martin, something Delano, uh, Franklin, you know, Franklin Delano, Delano, Franklin Delano, he's like Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, politician. He's not even like a, he's not even like a, a, a Kennedy politician. He's like a, you see, like that, he's like that, which is fine, no problem, that's what you want. These times don't, these times call for some really radical things, not to bring us back to, to, to Delano Roosevelt days, okay? We need to be brought back to something, we need to brought to something that ain't existed before. Okay, so you know, put carrying on with these identity policies ain't gonna work. Just putting anybody ain't gonna work. Do you know? Let me. I'm sorry. I just gotta go one little diverse as usual. I heard one time. You know, Norman Lear. You know, when they first had a, a All in the Family, and they they and, and uh, Lionel, who plays the, the, the supposedly uh, uh, the guy um, spelling whatever the, uh, the big guy is Lear. He was driving down the highway. He knew he had to. He saw this guy walking, black guy walking. He said that out. The guy says, "Well, he's an actor." But he just gets the role as Lionel. And if you look at that first Lionel, he wasn't that great. He wasn't that good. I know that because you know my acting teacher. You know, in the Cambridge, he didn't go there. He he was out there teaching, uh, uh, training actors. Those Hollywood, some of those Hollywood actors. So obviously, he didn't go to Ed Cambridge to. To get to get a net to get a uh, you know a reference you know you just pick somebody off the street. Well, I'm not saying that Brianna or whoever her name is is picked up off the street. I'm just saying what's the vetting? Because at this moment in time, it is very important that the agenda that will basically make everything fall into place is the black agenda as expressed by ADOS 101.com. Just a little message, you know. See what happens. See how it goes. But I guarantee this is the this is a this is the movement 
all you all you revolutionaries, all you whatever has been waiting for. This is the, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Take your take your little agenda, whatever have you. We're not saying hit you. Well, you can. Well, you, I guess you can try to hit you another day, but take your little agenda and do your agenda. I'll get into some other stuff that that people should be doing. As I gave marching orders before, I have more marching orders, but not right now, because this is, this is it for a little report from me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Let you know what I only suspect from a desk of the American descendants of chattel slavery. Check them out. Eddie Rags101.com